You may know him from the popular primetime show, The Middle. We have John Gammon with us today on UFF. Now, John, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me. You've actually gone to school and gotten degrees, and you come from a very academic-driven family. So you almost had to go through the milestones before you could pursue acting. Yeah. What was that like? <laughs> I mean, I guess they would be milestones for a guy with my brain, you know, who ended up being an actor for sure. But yeah, I mean, I, I graduated with a bachelor's degree uh, from a school in New Orleans, Loyola, New Orleans, what? And got kicked out for a semester because of Katrina. Uh, came back, eventually graduated, but uh, finally when I got those sort of, so those, uh, sort of ducks in a row, that's when I was able to kind of just like focus in on what I really wanted to do, so I'd give a, acting a shot. We we often struggle a lot of times kind of knowing what we want to do in life, and, and the, the world is so big, and knowing kind of, even just in school, what we want to study and things, but beyond that, we always are worried, do we make the right choice? Do you have a defining moment where it's just kind of like, yes, this is this is my passion, this is what I want to do? When we got to college, it was like, our, try some electives before you graduate, and I was like, well, I'll try theater. I'll try theater one, and then, Senior year, I tried uh, uh, acting for the screen, film and TV, and I just kind of knew that's what I wanted to do. And there was one time where I was basically in class in college going like, you know, I actually enjoy this class. This, this makes a lot of sense to me. This is kind of probably what it's like for, you know, Stephen Hawking when he's sitting in the middle of calculus. He's like, oh, he's like annoyed. He wants to like keep going. <laughs> And he's kind of annoyed at everybody like who can't keep up and he just want he just wants to do it like forever, you know. That was the moment. What has been um the greatest challenge or obstacle um uh, so far in your career? I've I've had the chance to audition for a lot of big stuff and just to I guess lose out to guys with more credits, you know. So it's like I'd like to see the tape, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't see I didn't see them audition, I saw mine and Yeah. Mine was great. <laughs> and then I saw the movie, and that was terrible. Like, you know what I mean? Like honestly, I was sitting there, and like, could have done that better. We're always, in some ways, that under that underdog in some part of of our lives, be it in our career or, or something. And it's really hard sometimes to stand out, I guess, and and make your voice heard when you haven't. It's like the chicken before the egg type of thing. Like, yeah. how can you make your voice heard if you don't have the credentials with experience and you won't get those opportunities to make your voice heard without the credentials and the experience? That's why we're crazy. <laughs> the big catch point too is like, you have no credits. Okay, what do I do? Get a credit. I can't. I have to have credits to get a credit. Like, exactly. You know. So how have you kind of overcome that? Because you, you're you on a primetime show now, so you're, you're doing well, so you did make your voice heard. So, yeah. Uh, do you have any tips for those out there who are in that chicken and egg situation? Just, uh, just understand that really the journey is the destination in and of itself. Like your job as an actor is definitely to audition. It's, it's not even to uh, go to a job regularly because, you know, what are the chances of you getting a regular job like mine? I got lucky. I mean, I got lucky when somebody said, you know what, he doesn't have any credits, but we're going to hire him anyway. <laughs> and, and that was his first time on any show. We're going to write him in again. You know what? That was his second time. We're going to keep writing him. And like after five years, it's like, why don't we get him to date Sue? I think that would be I think that would be a nice thing. I think <laughs> all of uh, the, uh, the United States would love that, maybe even the world. Uh, let's let's try for that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I, you just literally have to enjoy auditioning. Otherwise, you will absolutely go crazy if if you're an out of work actor. You have to enjoy. You have to enjoy your day job. You know, just be happy. Don't come at don't come at it from a deficit. You know, like I must have a, an acting job. I must have like a regular series role, or I'm not good enough. Like, no, you are good enough, and you know. If you bring that into the auditioning room, you will eventually get something to happen. Well, I thank you so much for being with us here today. Uh, it's You're very been, welcome. It's been delight to speak with you, and yeah. uh, definitely we'll have to stay tuned uh, to see more of what what happens with Darren on the middle. I hope so. <laughs> I hope you watch. I hope everybody watches. Please watch. Although acting was always a passion because you didn't pursue it for school, is there a reason why uh, you chose something like history and Spanish instead? Well, I did grow up in the Midwest, and boys tend to play sports. I played a whole bunch of sports, and you know, it was funny, like in high school, that was when I was like, all right, I'd like to go do some training. Uh, let's see, like, 
what was what they had to offer. They had a uh, a club called the Harlequins, and you know they, they weren't thespians. I was like, what is that about? You know, because my sister had told me, you know, like join the thespians, join the thespians. I'm like, we have Harlequins. I don't know what those are. They sound like little green people that <laughs> live underneath the couch. If you don't know any better, you know, like they did musicals only. I've never been a musical guy. Like I, I like to sing in the shower, but it's just not my thing.